I have to confess, these Taliban jihadis are cracking me up. For years, almost everything we heard about the Taliban had something to do with terrorism, planting bombs, sending suicide bombers all over the country, bombing schools, bombing hospitals, pretty terrible stuff. Now we get to hear from them directly, and I am liking some of what I'm hearing. I'm not liking what they've been doing in Afghanistan or what they're about to do in Afghanistan, but I do like it when they expose hypocrisy. The other day we talked about the two spokesmen for the Taliban. We went to the official Twitter account of the spokesman of Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, Zabahullah Mujahid. Yes, he has well over 300,000 followers on the Islamic Emirate of Twitter. Mr. Mujahid just gave his first Taliban press conference. He was asked about the Taliban's plans for the Afghans who opposed them, about how women will be treated, and so on. Then he was asked about freedom of speech in the new Afghanistan. Will the people of Afghanistan have freedom of speech under the Taliban? Check out his response. This question should be asked to those people who are uh, claiming to be promoters of freedom of speech, uh, who do not allow uh, publication of all information. And you sh I can ask Facebook uh, company. Uh, this question should be asked to them. Now, that's a total deflection. Hey, Taliban, are you going to respect freedom of speech? Why are you asking us? Why not ask Facebook how much they respect freedom of speech? Not a real answer to the question, but he does make an important point. We look at the Taliban and we say, oh, they don't respect freedom of speech. We look at China and we say, oh, the Communist Party controls what people are allowed to say. But here we are in the enlightened West, and we have complete morons who are paid by tech companies like Facebook to control what we can say. Yeah, you can go in your backyard and say what you want. Yeah, you can say what you want on the sidewalk. But the real public square in the 21st century is the internet, where an elite class of technocrats pays morons to control what we can say and we put up with it. We say, oh, but they're private companies. Free speech just means that the government can't control what we say. Private companies can do what they want. There are three main problems with that view. First, as I mentioned, these platforms have become the new public square. U.S. courts have repeatedly declared that free speech has to be protected on public streets and public parks and so on, because that's where people share their thoughts. But that's changed. Now, many people communicate their thoughts primarily through Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, and this puts most public communication under the control of companies and algorithms. So we have to ask ourselves, what was the point of protecting free speech from the government? The point was that it's extremely dangerous for a small group of people to have control over what the population is allowed to say. In the 1700s, the only small group of people they could think of who could possibly do that would be the government. But now there are small groups of people who have more control over what we say than the government from the 1700s could have dreamed of. And we've got some problems. It's a new situation, which means that we need to re-examine the rules. Second, it's not entirely correct to dismiss concerns about free speech by saying that these are private companies. They're not private companies like other private companies. They're actually something in between public entities and private companies due to the protections given to them by the government. Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act gave legal protections to platforms by distinguishing them from publishers. A publisher, like the New York Times, decides which content it's going to put out, so it's considered a publisher. You can sue the New York Times for the content it puts out because it controls the content on its site. Platforms, by contrast, aren't supposed to control the content they put out. They're merely places for other people to post content. So the U.S. government says, 
Well, since you don't control the content on your site, since you're functioning more like a public square for other people to share their ideas, you're not responsible for this content and therefore you can't be sued. So the government gives these platforms a special legal status because they're platforms, not publishers. But what do these platforms now do? They control the content on their sites, which makes them publishers by definition, which means that their status as platforms should be taken away. As long as these companies are claiming to be platforms, they should be acting like platforms and not controlling what people say. Third, like it or not, the government is controlling your speech through these platforms. This is a violation of your First Amendment rights. Politicians are putting out all kinds of rules about which ideas are acceptable and which ideas aren't acceptable, and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube are blocking content and banning users based on what politicians are telling them. So no matter how you look at it, freedom of speech in the West in general, and in the United States in particular, is being crushed. And we're pointing a finger at the Taliban? Look around you. Does Facebook have blasphemy laws? Does Twitter have blasphemy laws? Does YouTube have blasphemy laws? Of course they do. They just don't call them blasphemy laws. Do Facebook and Twitter and YouTube punish infidels? Of course they do. They just don't call them infidels. The Taliban is all around you. It's just not called the Taliban. But a Taliban, by any other name, still smells just as bad.